Hey everybody and welcome to the future of photography. Oh wow, uh, it's a, I, I've very, been very fortunate this week but more on that later. Uh, first of all, sad to say Chris isn't going to be with us this week because uh, he's off doing something or other. Actually I have no idea what he's doing. Ema, do having you know what fun. Doing? He's having fun. I actually have no idea, yeah. Yeah. He's having fun without us. <laughs> how is that possible? Oh <laughs> uh, well, Ema, how are you? I'm not too bad. Not too bad. We are back in lockdown here, proper lockdown. So yeah, but look, the sun's shining, so oh, it's all good. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yes. yeah very good. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it's kind of yeah. gloomy. It's kind of gloomy here in California mm. this morning. So uh, swapped. Swapped Swap, with Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. Long may it last. <laughs> and it's just almost dark here, actually. So um, it, it's been very wet and rainy today. which is. I've been, been trying good. to figure out all day if the clocks are actually going to go back tonight because wasn't there all this talk of it, it not happening this year? And then so like I'm no. going to have to wake up tomorrow and see what time it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I hadn't picked up on that. As far as I'm aware, the, the it, British it clocks go back tonight. Okay, okay. Well, you see, if yeah. you if if yours is going back, ours is going back because that's just the way it works. But um, uh, I uh, thought there was big talk of just abolishing the whole daylight savings. Th- there has yeah. been, uh, yeah. you know, uh, and and listen, that would be great for me, as Adrian knows. I am very, very. Uh, confused by time zones <laughs> as our scheduling <laughs> has indicated over the last it, several it, several months it's okay that yeah, the, the listeners don't need to know about the stuff <laughs> the, the, the logistical challenges we have in bringing this gold-plated like content every week you know <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado we are going to talk about adobe max's introduction of new facebook neural filters facebook neural filters i mean photoshop neural filters. <laughs> i didn't know adobe had bought facebook oh my goodness that was quite yeah, an announcement that would be really scary one is just a little scary the other one is completely scary maybe it's prediction if we listen back this time next year it might actually have happened nothing <laughs> would surprise anybody at this po- stage that's a good point but three years in i don't think anything i've ever said has ever happened so. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, yeah, we're going to talk today about some new stuff from Adobe, uh, which has been uh, doing the rounds in all the in all the Internet sites about photography and what have you this week. Uh, Trying to put our own spin on it, of course, and consider what does that mean for the future of photography? Because some of that, uh, well, I'll try not to be my usual dystopian, cynical self too much, but there's Mm -hmm. definitely some of that to to consider. Just Um, leave that to me. Just leave that. Just leave that to you. Okay. All right. Well, I tell you what, Jeremiah. Why don't you kick us off? Because I understand you've been attending some of the Adobe Max events. Is that what it's called this week? Yeah. 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 I, I believe uh, normally they have it in person. Um, you know, people uh, fly in and they have all kinds of conferences and lectures and keynotes and they announce all their new stuff, stuff they have in the lab. And uh, this year it was free and evidently half a million people registered. Whoa. Wow. And they organized it very, very well because it was global events. So there was events happening in multiple languages 24-7 on the schedule. And um, uh, I found it, if you, if you could uh, define your interests specifically, you could find some very, very interesting things. I found it mm-hmm. interesting kind of exploring the new um, lab stuff, which is the stuff that's not announced, but the stuff that they are, in fact, working on. Uh, the stuff that they did announce, which, of course, touched a chord with, with me, and I'm sure with all of us, is how Photoshop uh, filters has adopted something um, that they call a neural uh, filter. Now, n- neural's definition is interesting because it is <laughs> the definition as an adjective it is relating to a nerve or the nervous system mm. so um this provokes of course uh some reactions when one sees a um an image which one needs to manipulate uh, how much of the kind of nerve reaction um is uh, kind of balanced or in opposition to our aesthetic balance, and why did they even call it that? 
so is that, have they actually got so my i just assumed that they meant that their machine learning models were trained on neural networks or or, or some some such you know i mean you hear a lot about neural networks these days yeah. and how you can mm. you know you can cause networks to compete against each other and, and that's yeah. how they get cleverer at manipulating stuff Sure, I just thought it would be interesting to go back to the root of it. And, and <laughs> are you are you trying to tell us? Are you trying to like segue us into a conversation about how Adobe is currently making you very nervous? <laughs> Me personally, I I use them all the time, so I like them. But I know it's making uh, a lot of people very very nervous um, when 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 it's so simple to completely transform a face from frightened to confident, from fearful to happy, from happy to sad, just with a slider, and it looks frighteningly perfect. I the, did watch the that video me. that you, yeah. It's that a you worry. Put in. Yeah, it's I think a it's a bit creepy looking, like the expression, like it looks that a bit weird and fake, like a ventriloquist dummy. Like, <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> you, you can imagine the discussions there where it's like, you know what we need? Instead of people getting their entire family together and posing for a picture and you, you know, you're shouting, come on, everybody, smile. <laughs> and there's always one or two mm. that are frowning. <laughs> this gives you the opportunity to make everybody <laughs> very smile. happy in your family, like. whether it's true or not. So it's not, it's not like the exorcist where people's heads spin around. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Not yet. I it don't looked a bit like that. E Eva, come on, t t speak to us, Eva. You say it sounds, it looks creepy. What, I what, just, I just, I, I found it unsettling to watch. Just, um, and all I've now haven't had a chance to. Is it's going to be in the new Photoshop I news haven't, update? Yeah, I haven't had a chance to update yet, so I haven't got to play with any of these things. But yeah, not just, all the, the video not all of them are working. We watched was just incredibly creepy. I thought that even the before and after. I don't know. It's just why would you? Why I, I, would you I, want to do that? Really? I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> the, the, I'll tell you. Um, I, I think. Th I mean, my overall impression is pretty fantastic. Mm. I mean, really, really, um, a, an amazing jump in AI processing of imagery. Um, mm. Whether it's sky replacement or, or understanding the relationship of, of how a sky would, would work with a, a reflection, um, how you could adjust skin tone, you know, to smooth out if you're in the, mm. you know, mm. the retouching business, um, creating masks, <laughs> all, all of these things uh, are, are pretty amazing. Now, uh, you know, uh, Photoshop uh, has been dancing around uh, these kinds of like intelligent masking and all of that stuff um, and a company like Topaz which also is using a lot of AI to kind of enable people who want to do you know high level sophisticated masking and, and adjustment of their pictures instead of you know going to art school and learning how to airbrush etc cetera, etc cetera, this is a way of doing it uh, intuitively um, but uh, just increases the opportunity for true artistic mm. uh, expression used in the in the same way. And, and as you know, you guys know, um, a lot of my work uh, is is based on on uh, false yeah. imagery that represents itself as true. So I'm very interested in that uh, gray zone between reality and, and fiction in terms of photography or digital art, whatever you want to And I can totally uh, see it. its use being really, really brilliant for the kind of work that you do, but just for the general <laughs> sort of everyday photographer. Well, um, I, yeah. yeah. I mean, Emer, I think my very first episode uh, on the show was called The Laws of Unintended Consequences. Mm. Does that ring a bell? I, th mm -hmm. I think we, we spoke um, a lot about, yeah, this is, it's a great thing for expression, but maybe a very dark thing for political. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, the, the political context is, is interesting, isn't it? Because one of the first, you know, after the announcements came out, the first thing, one of the first things I saw was somebody had taken a photograph of, of Joe Biden and, and, and uh, made him about 30, 40 years younger, um, <laughs> which 
uh, is you know for, for those that are listening to this in in the far flung future joe biden is currently running for president of the <laughs> usa um so you know that's that's quite a, a, an interesting um thing and, and of course you link that up to the deep fakes that we see these days and and what have you it could be very easy to mm. to make a video of a, a political candidate claiming that it was shot you know 30 years ago and showing them i don't know doing drugs or mm. or hanging out with the wrong type of ladies and saying um, different <laughs> things as well I, I i think that um one of the other things that that adobe had spoken about uh, which they're in, in, involved in is adding uh, metadata to the uh, image that one captures, which embeds itself inside the imagery in perpetuity. So there's no discussion if somebody lifts an image off the web and uses it for nefarious purposes, advertising. Well, that's a really good what, thing, uh, yeah. That yeah. you can immediately go, no, mm. this is this is my image, yeah. this is copyright, and this is when it was created. Mm. I feel that as we move towards a more fungible gray zone of increasing deep fakes, um, or even not deep fakes, but surface, small little adjustments, mm. um, drool coming out of somebody's <laughs> mouth. I mean, th 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 there's a lot of things you could do to humiliate and, and kind of discombobulate general populations with photo manipulations. We all know that. But if there's a way of embedding the XML with the understanding of uh, an image manipulation, yet in other words, yes, this mm -hmm. image has been manipulated. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, in the XML, then coupled with bringing children up in an environment uh, that uh, creates an understanding that what they see, hear, read in mass media is not always uh, what yeah. we would consider the truth, that there are agendas involved and there are people involved in trying to manipulate and convince you of things. And as, like, I have a seven-year-old granddaughter and um, often, like if we're watching TV and, and whatnot and an ad comes, she knows, oh, that's an ad. Mm, yeah. Like she, she, she knows the difference between truth and fiction in terms mm. of people trying to sell her something. <laughs> um, and that's because... Well, that's a good oh, thing. That is it a good is, thing. It's, no, yeah. it is. And we've, we, I've, it, you know, when I'm with her, I invest quite a lot of time mm. in, in that kind of understanding. And she does understand that. But I think you have to go into bringing up a generation of children who, unlike us, we just go, it was in the papers. I read it on, yeah, yeah, online. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it, it, it is very, it is very mm. interesting. And I'm mean, I, I bringing up two young children right now who, who are starting to take their steps into the digital world. And, you know, I was talking to them both about phishing emails earlier today, um, you mm. know, and they understand, uh, it's not the first time I've spoken to them about it, but they understand what phishing emails are and they know how not to click on stuff and, and things like that. So, so mm. it, it's just part of bringing kids up in, you know, uh, mm. in the real world. I mean, it used to be stranger danger, but now none of us are allowed out of the house. There's, no, there's less of an issue, <laughs> isn't it? It's, you know, now, now it's about, you know, stranger danger on the internet. Online, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I would like to, okay, so we've done the dystopian bit and I'm glad we've done that first because I'd like to move the conversation on because otherwise we're going to be the most <laughs> miserable podcast ever, aren't we, right? We do this every week, get miserable about the future of photography. It's supposed to be exciting. So two things I want to talk about, right? Uh, and we can, uh, first of all is uh, the aesthetic, right? So what's going to, what do these kinds of tools mean for the aesthetic? So maybe not so much of the neural filter stuff, but things like sky replacement. And also what does this mean for, uh, the business of, of, of making imagery and how do these tools make the business imagery and I think I think actually I'd like to segue into that one first because um, no 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 we'll do the aesthetic first but I'd, I'd like to segue into it by talking as a software developer so um, I, I do in my professional life get very close to the development of software that's kind of what I do not because I'm person writing the code normally I'm the person building a team and running stuff um, and I'm not a programmer you know in, in the past I haven't sort of come up through that path 
But actually, uh, one of the things that is is very much business as usual these days in software development is to talk in terms of user journeys or user experience mm. uh, or, or outcomes. And, mm. and it's uh, and, and long gone are the days of development of complex tool sets, which you just expose sort of nakedly to the user and assume they know what they're doing. Now, one could argue that Photoshop, as it is now some 30 years old probably uh, yeah. and, and probably was last re-architected about 25 years ago um, it, it to me has always been completely impenetrable do I know why you have to use a thing called an unsharp mask to sharpen stuff no I don't do I know what the sliders do for that no I don't I can do basic stuff like layers and gradients and blah 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 but yeah you know, there's a lot of photoshop which to me is absolutely archaic in its user experience and i think it's taken companies like perhaps luminar who are first let's face it they're definitely first into the whole sky replacement area um it, i think it's taken them to consider what i would call a user outcome or a user journey or a user experience and say actually i know what you want to do as a user you want to tart up your photos don't you that's what you want to do basically <laughs> and so you know I, I want to replace the sky I want to change the lighting I, I don't I don't want to know the difference between the Gaussian blur and the five other kinds that Photoshop <laughs> has <clears throat> so Eva what do you think about that because I know that you come at this from uh, a tools for outcomes point of view. I think you do you know, yeah you focus on using apps uh, on phones and stuff like that I am yeah I wonder is Photoshop like I, I I don't know what half of the things in Photoshop can do for me I know the tools within there that I like to use and I tend to just stick to them. But um, I think um, like does is it that the Adobe st it just requ I don't know, you almost expect that you're going to have to put some work into it to, to learn the interfaces of them. And then once you start to get to know one that across the range, they're kind of similar and you can kind of work your way through them that way because and they're dense. That's the only thing. And how do you i don't know is there any way to simplify there's so much going on in there like how do you simplify that well, i can uh, answer that yeah go, go for well, it well I, jeremiah you're a professional user mm, of these things so go for I, it i've been using photoshop since photoshop one so mm. I, I i i do have some experience in it and and the way that photoshop works best is when you define what it is you want to do with it yeah in other words, let's just say all you want to do with it is approach 10 different aspects to it. Mm. You want very simple recropping. You can um, kind of make toolbox, can't you, with just the, you, you know, you can get your, rid can of really everything mm. that has nothing to do, to do with, with you. Yeah. And yeah. just you can have all your tools. You can locate those tools simply and put it away. I mm. always refer to Photoshop as sort of the Microsoft Word. It is really yeah. that bad. Yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's dense or final draft. I mean, if those of us who are into the screenwriting uh, programs, what started off as very simple um, becomes uh, in 10 years, what is commonly called bloatware <laughs> where in order to keep people upgrading it you just keep adding stuff but you mm. you don't really take anything away and then the manuals become thicker and thicker and it becomes overwhelming because there is so much if I was a type designer and all I wanted to do was design type Photoshop is fantastic I, I don't have to know anything about the uh, about the photographic uses of, mm. of it, yeah, but yeah. but using but I can put together a tool set that is very specific to that. If I wanted to create labels that wrapped around a bottle that I photographed in order to demonstrate that to a this is talking about business, um, uh, talk about a mock-up, uh, all I would have to do is photograph a glass bottle, work out a uh, a you know a a, a a graphic in Photoshop and then use something called dimension, which will put that graphic in 3D space and I'll be able to mm. wrap it around. All of these use what we call, you know, layer, it's a layer mm. system. 
And uh, so once you get familiar with the layer mm. system, it's not as complicated. Mm. But I would suggest anyone interested in Photoshop really should start from the point of view of just asking themselves what it is they would like it to do for them. Mm. And then, you know, taking a couple of online videos about how to manage your um, your Photoshop space, mm. getting rid of anything that doesn't apply to that, and just simply use that tool set. And I think you'll find that the user experience is really good. So and you, you know, totally I think as well, trap, Jeremiah. <laughs> you know, isn't kind of good file structure and layer structure and project structure really important within? There's all, there's all sorts all of stuff, and there's all, well. and, and I appreciate the tidier you keep things, I think the easier it is to. You know, navigate your way around things. Yeah, I think so. But but I'm afraid, Jeremiah, what you've just described is actually the problem rather than the solution. It's <laughs> it it, could be. it's it's a piece of software that is, okay, it's incredibly powerful. Nobody's going to deny that. But it's completely unusable unless you've got a whole third party ecosystem around it telling you how to do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, like, uh, see, I would disagree because there is so much of uh, video learning. Like, for example, I've been using it a long time, but there's so much to learn that if I wanted to do something very specific and I go, I know Photoshop can do this, mm. I, I'm just forgetting. Mm. All I do is I go to YouTube and I go, you know, how to change a single cloud into a donkey. And like, <laughs> boom, yeah. somebody's yeah. made a video of it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I'm good. And that's, mm. that's the positive side mm. of having a piece of software that's been around so long mm. yeah, it it is now and uh, that that is true but uh so so well may, maybe we'll have to call this one a draw then and, and, and move the <laughs> conversation on a bit because i think you know for, for me working as i do a lot in the development of software um the the experience is archaic um mm. and and you know it is no surprise to me that that companies like luminar are able to step forward in in great bounds because they very much focus on the user experience and the user outcome and yes the 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 number of outcomes that the user can achieve is far more limited but let's face it most people don't need the the, the depth so it's it's mm. you know to tools I Tools for different mm. people trying to achieve different things, and, and, and it's great, and, and it, it's a fantastic thing that Photoshop exists. It's a fantastic thing that it actually has direct competitors mm. in terms of things like Affinity Photo, uh, and it's also great that tech people take other approaches. But i tell you one thing, you know, moving it on ever so slightly, because often you'll get your find, or when you look back uh, through, let's say, the, the, the recent history of imaging, uh, the last, I don't know, 50 years or so of image making, um, you'll find that new techniques uh, or new tools uh, that that aspire or inspire and give rise to new aesthetics. So, you know, I remember when I was a kid, I used to watch a programme called Top of the Pops on TV. Me too. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember that at the time there was a very, very limited series of video effects. You used to be able to get one yeah. that would sort of take a cut out of a silhouette <laughs> and make it go into rainbow yeah. colours and drift off into yeah. the background. Right. And that was all hardware effects, I think. Mm. Um, and, and but that would you know so a tool was invented and it brought forth an aesthetic mm. as did perhaps the electric guitar right um, uh, 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 and I'm sure we could we could name each of us could name other things can we see anything this week from Adobe or, or, or at the moment that is going to uh, is going to generate you know a new aesthetic in in commercial imaging like are we all going to have the same sky for the next three years in every single advertisement we look mm. at um they're working on some very interesting things one is called on the beat it's a ai powered music video editing and it will okay. syn synchronize uh people's body movements to beats now i have no idea if this is useful nice. or not but it's it good is, but for white people who can't dance that's for sure <laughs> uh you know they have something called comic blast which is a way 
for you and I, very simply, to make comic books. It's pretty mm. fantastic. These are not released yet, but they're, they're doing that. Um, they're doing uh, something called 2D+, Plus, which is you can take a picture of material and then, and then transform it to apply it into a photograph that looks absolutely uh, real. And, you know, yeah. scanning real-world objects into 3D assets. Yeah, um, okay. Typographic brushes. Um, you know, all, all of those things uh, are, are, are pretty e exciting things that will mm. create an, a, a specific aesthetic. I think... You know, you mentioned Luminar. I, I'm, I love Luminar. I, I, I think Luminar is a uh, a mod, a modest step forward in the user experience, and in terms of luminosity masking, and and uh, they do a lot of things super well. D uh, ditto Topaz. You know, they they have very specific things uh, that they do in terms of AI being able to sharpen uh being able to blow up they have uh, uh w something that i've used which converts jpegs to raw and then uh, uh, enables you I to do kind that. of reprocess <laughs> <laughs> neural <laughs> oh yeah of course cool. sorry silly me so uh, th th there are um uh, a lot of techniques and in fact uh, one of the kind of future episodes i um i proposed um recently is, is something that is about how do we find our voice in photography and how do we find our gear in photography and how do we find our technique in mm. photography and how that all synthesizes to create our future style. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and I, I think so th those are things that are very interesting for us to kind of integrate and, and experience. At the end of the day, um, you know, Photoshop for me going back to that is like ha going and buying something online is going like, you'll never have to buy another <laughs> toolbox again. Mm -hmm. Every screwdriver, <laughs> every bolt it. cutter, yeah. everything's like you mm. buy it and you get, uh, you know, basically something that needs a truck to haul around and you go like, where's that Phillips screwdriver here? <laughs> I need. And it could take you an hour to sort through all of the things. Yeah, there, there, there is an element of that, isn't it? But I think it's, um, so, so what you're saying, so I, I guess, you know, I, I guess I pulled some good examples um, uh, 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 of aesthetic changes, you know, the electric guitar out of the hat. One of the ones that I really, really, really winds me up, and I think it does to a lot of people, is a little audio tool called Auto-Tune. And oh yeah every every, <laughs> every seemingly record made in the last 15 years and this is going to make me sound very old but you know that uh, uh listening to you know the main pop music radio stations here in the uk less the the more sort of serious more indie kind of oriented <laughs> radio stations but certainly in pop music you can't really hear what people's voices sound like anymore and they uh, you know um and that winds me up so that that's an example of a tool that has driven an aesthetic which personally really grates mm. on me um <laughs> so are we in any danger of that from what you've seen at adobe max this week then jeremiah P uh, probably but the mis <laughs> oh, but because what 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 always <clears throat> happens when new tools get introduced uh, you know when when lomo first um kind of presented itself mm -hmm. it was like light leaks they're great <laughs> <laughs> they're everywhere. Yeah. right it's like <clears throat> nowadays like light leaks really drive me nuts because <laughs> while i would appreciate the real thing using an old mm. you know i have some cameras that are bound up in gaffers tape that have <laughs> light leaks i can't predict them they're just what well. it is and i find it quote charming uh but once light leaks as a filter became a you know a thing then it becomes tiresome same way that flare does like i, I love flare and i love you know hard flare into glass and all of the radiance that that it encompasses that but like nowadays it's like every commercial every shot it's like all that oh yeah flare 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 does it like i still like the aesthetic but it's like come on fake 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 that's <laughs> fake flare i you just know it um, uh, so so yes overuse of any technique or or kind of new thing is 
definitely, definitely going to create a little bit of uh, grating <laughs> on the, the old visual <coughs> response uh, for me. Uh, okay, uh, so there's e- Ema, something for you to watch out for there because next time you're curating a show, you're going to have to you'll watch out for these new Adobe tools. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You know. <laughs> next photography, yeah. But, uh, but, oh, uh, don't. Uh, e- e- can e- have a Emer, show again? Emer, when you, like, I've been looking at the... <laughs> <laughs> You're going to mm-hmm. kill me for this for oh, saying no. this, but I've been looking at the new iPhone 12. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. Is it better than mine? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have what you have, so so mm. you know, uh, but and obviously I haven't seen one, but I've been reading the specs on it, and uh, you know, the lidar applications are pretty amazing. Oh, okay. If you if, you know, if you're using mm. those kinds mm. of depth depth analysis um the glass is good the 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 uh the, the kind of pixel shifting stabilization <coughs> mm. uh is great and the on the pro max the the 65 millimeter equivalent zoom mm. uh is pretty pretty significant and mm. and over the last two weeks uh, for those of you who follow my instagram uh, i've been really just using my thanks to you emer I, I've been limiting myself or expanding my universe, depending mm. on how you're coming at. Just <laughs> taking uh, my uh, iPhone yeah. for 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 my daily walk, and okay. and and I have to say I've been absolutely loving it. I I, I downloaded a new uh, the re uh, launch or the Halide Two. Halide uh, yeah, I saw very, that very came good. out this uh, week. Okay. Yeah, ha- Halide Two is is fantastic uh, because it. It enables you to shoot in RAW so that oh. you can bring it into mm. uh, Lightroom and Photoshop and mm. manipulate the shit out of it. Uh, change the sky. Right. Yeah, change the sky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it also, like, just at your fingertips, uh, you know, uh, select the ISO, select the... I mean, you, you have a lot of control instantly and coupled with uh, good glass on the camera. It, mm. It's going to be, a ga- I think, a game changer... Um, well, it certainly will be for me. I am about to order one. Uh, I'm not quite sure <gasps> which one yet, but given that I currently have an iPhone 6S, which mm. I think is coming up for five years old in the next mm. couple of weeks, um, yeah. I, it, I, I'm certainly going to notice the difference. And so uh, I'm not sure. You're not I'm going gonna... back to the mini one, are you? Uh, no, I'm no, going to no, suggest gonna... you get the no. Pro Max yeah. as a photographer. I, I may well get the Max one, actually, yeah. Yeah, although yeah, I've yeah, never yeah. had a phone that big. Uh, yeah. but, it's yeah. not that big. You'll see. It's not that yeah. big. Uh, it, it is compared to an iPhone 6s, but we anyway moving <laughs> moving along because we we are we we've been going for a little while, and I do want to talk about it just briefly um, the the impact of these new Adobe launches uh, on the business of image making, and and I guess particularly the sort of outsourced post production side of images where I can see that there will be potentially uh, an impact for two ways one is that actually um, it might drive prices down because if things are not so hard to do then those outsourcers are not going to be able to charge so much there's an economic point thing going there or or maybe is adobe getting to the point where things are are so straightforward now that that things can be processed by people who would normally look to outsource the post-production is it that easy yet or is that on its way emer do you want to take that um, I don't know, actually. Uh, I presume it'll make it easier for the people who already manipulate the, you know, glossy public photos. It'll just make their job that little bit easier again. <laughs> and it'll, it'll make it so that anybody can do the same thing now. But um, I, I don't know. Yeah, I would, I would relate it to what happened in film when we used mm. to edit on film. Um, and we would have a certain amount of time to put a film together and present it and, and kind of reconstruct it and all. Then when we went to digital, what happened is, well, our editing time got halved. So mm. what, what I believe will happen is you'll have an image, and instead of like, well, I'll need this for a week, and I'll, I'll let's talk about uh, just a, a, a straight-up um, retoucher right, mm. who's going to retouch or composite or whatnot for a commercial or an mm. ad, let's say an ad, print ad. So instead of having that one week or two weeks to do it, it's like, they want it tomorrow. here's the picture. Uh, yeah, we expect <laughs> yeah. it tomorrow afternoon yeah. and we're going to pay you half. 
because yeah. you're being, or less mm. because you're being paid by the hour. Mm -hmm. So yes, it will directly affect those who have used their manual dexterity, education, mm. learning skills. Uh, it will replace a certain amount of them, but the ones who have who are are kind of beyond that in terms of super skill will take that. We'll call it neural engine and be able to go even further yeah. with it or more subtle uh, work with it. So there's going to be some dropping out of the kind of mean uh, of the skill set. I think the people at the very kind of coming into it will be advantaged because, mm. as you said, Emer, that there are people who normally would not be able to do mm. this. Like, you know, for example... Me. If you're an ad, <laughs> well, if you're if you're an ad agency, right, mm. uh, and you need to do something, your art director can do it mm. instead of outsourcing. Oh yeah, it. yeah, or at least yes, more. There's going to be people yeah. making videos all over YouTube teaching us all how to do use these tools. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and they're going to be making yeah. the money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Well, we, we should probably we should probably start to wrap up there and dip to some picks of the week. But I think it's been good to talk about some different aspects of of what these kinds of things mean for for the future sure. of photography. And I guess we've talked about image making in general as well, haven't we? Mm. Rather than just photography <laughs> this week, these things are so powerful these days. Um, and uh, you know, I personally am looking forward to winning uh, the upcoming US election uh, <laughs> <laughs> through, through a mixture of, of deep fake uh, and uh, Russian advertising money. Um, I hope you win. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I think I know. I know. As we record this, people are voting now by post, aren't they? Hopefully, it's not so close to the actual election day, which is uh, actually when is the actual election day? November third. November third. Okay. But who's counting? I, I <laughs> voted. Fifty million of us have voted. Yeah, as of loads today. and loads of people voted. That's already, incredible. Didn't That's they? almost as many people as live in my country have voted <laughs> ahead of time. Wow. Ahead of time. This is going to be the the most uh, dazzling turnout of any election we've ever had ever. Wow. Well, um, I, I, yes, well. Fingers crossed, yeah. <laughs> Fingers indeed, crossed. indeed. Okay, right. So let's end uh, with some fun and lighthearted picks of the week. Uh, Ema, do you want to go first? Yeah, okay. Um, my pick of the week this week is a guy I've been watching for a while on YouTube. I'm mentioning uh, people doing tutorials and things. This guy is called Nigel Danson, and he's a landscape photographer, but he's just got a... Um, he kind of puts a video out consistently every Sunday morning, which I always kind of get to watch while I cook and uh, something very relaxing about it. And he also lives in, in a gorgeous location. So he takes you to some lovely places and he photographs all the types of things that I like to photograph. So um, very personable kind of guy. Um, one particular standout one to me lately was one that he did on um, photo books and he had kind of one from all the different manufacturers and he went through the kind of what I like about this, what I don't like about this. He's it, He covers a lot of interesting kind of practical topics as well. So definitely worth checking out. Cool. Um, okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, we'll do. Uh, Jeremiah, how about you? Uh, I sort of have a, a little bit of a double, double take here. Uh, one is a book called Deep Fakes, The Coming Infocalypse. In <laughs> it was published in the summer and it's a deep dive into all things deep and fake wow. by Nina Schick and uh, it's scary uh, wow. and on a more lighthearted um, you know <laughs> view um, I, I thought that I would um, also recommend a kind of a fun thing which is a uh, Lomo camera that uh, takes pictures, <laughs> but includes the sprockets. So it's kind of the opposite of where we've gone. Oh, yeah. it, it's applying an image to a complete roll of film in widescreen, effectively. It's, it's a pano that includes the sprockets. So it's, it's what you see is what you get. And, yeah. and so it, it, in an odd way, it, it, it's a flip of the slick neural filtration mm -mm -mm. That, that we talk about. And, and uh, it's just out by Lomo. And I thought, that's kind of a, a goofy thing. Of course, cool. you can always load it into Photoshop and 
<laughs> and manipulated that way. Yeah, okay, well my, <laughs> well, my pick <laughs> of the week uh, this week is is a little bit of movie goodness. Um, uh, I watched a movie this week uh, called Knives Out, uh, and um, uh, this is uh, uh, a, a really uh, modern take uh, with a twist uh, a good twist actually on the classic sort of Agatha Christie style who done it <laughs> yeah there's a, a yeah. wealthy family and one of them's been murdered and it's all set in this big old house and like there's a Cluedo. detective and mm. it's just awesome <laughs> it's just yeah. awesome it's beautifully shot too it, well this is my pick of the week it's specifically not just the not just the the it's, it's one aspect of the cinematography that really stood out for me and it's the lighting the the lighting is just amazing and um it, it, it it's sad to say it was almost good enough that it threw me out of the movie you know it was you, you know that you know, something jars with you uh, and it but this was such a positive thing so it, it didn't um if it had been badly yeah uh, if it had been a, a negative jar then i would have probably had to switch the movie off but i just sat mm. there and luxuriated in the cinematography <laughs> as well as the story which i ha- which was great and it's a genuine twist and uh, it's well worth watching in general very entertaining and super and the lens, the lensing is also in wide angle like i did notice that a lot of the close-ups close and wide yeah mm. i did notice that almost to the point where people's faces are being distorted yes it's yeah. and, and so the lighting also wraps around and it puts you very in the moment mm. Yes, and I believe we should we shout out to the the cinema for the, excuse me the cinema cinema, cinema, cinema <laughs> cinematographer who is a, who is called Steve Liedlin. A very very good piece of work. A very good piece of work. Anyway, that's us done. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for listening, or those of you who've been watching on YouTube. Um, if we manage to get this onto YouTube <laughs> without my laptop crashing because I'm recording the video this week, it'll look a little bit different, but hopefully it'll work. Uh, but thank you for listening. We'll be back again next week. Take care. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.